Hi, this tutorial is to guide you through uh, using SolidWorks 2013. Uh, this pretty much applies to later versions as well. There's not much that's changed. But uh, this is going to guide you through using SolidWorks 2013 to get the best output for your portfolio. Um, to start off with, what we want to do is make sure and open our project. So we're browsed to our project. And as you can see, I have a sample flash drive here that came with the program. I didn't make this. So I'll go ahead and open it up. <coughs> now, if you don't have so already, uh, if you're familiar with the command manager, you'll have several tabs here of what you can do here. Uh, you'll have your model here. Um, the one thing you need to turn on is a thing called PhotoWorks 360. Okay, we can either go up to the application tab up here and see SolidWorks and see how it expanded. We can go to Tools, and then you go down to Add-ins here. We can either go to Add-ins there, or we can go to see this little button up at the top where it says Options. See this little breakdown? We can go to that and go to Add-ins. Either way, it'll get us to the same place. If you'll notice, there's several different tools in here we can add in. So we're going to check Photo View 360. We'll go ahead and check that up. We'll go ahead and start it up. And click OK. So, if you didn't notice that in Command Manager here, with this, uh, with this little window right here, there's a new tab. It's called Render Tools. We'll click on that. And then we've got a series of options here. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is go to our options. Alright. Now within this options, what we want to do is pretty much turn up some of the standard options that they have. Now, some of the things we're not going to worry about, some of the things we are. Uh, one of the things we're going to look at is go to Output Image Size. There may be some default standardized sizes here. And what I would suggest is to get an idea of where your orientation of your camera is and how it's going to render. I would start off with either 1280 by 720 or even 1920 by 1080 because the rendering process will take will be of shorter time and you can kind of get an idea where your orientation for your picture is going to be. If you've uh, taken any classes with 3ds Max you'll know what I'm talking about in this room. Um, but anyways we'll go ahead just for the sake of uh, quick rendering and kind of walk, walking you through the guide we're going to use 1280 by 720 okay and then it picks it into the dimensions here. You can see horizontal and diagonal. Um, <clears throat> we're going to go to a JPEG format. We can choose other formats, but JPEG seems to be overall fairly uh, the most balanced uh, format that uh, others will take in. We can do a Windows BMP, but JPEG seems to work out just fine. All right, render quality. You can do the preview render good because that always tends to be pretty uh, decent so you can get your orientation down and everything. Uh, the final render, we want to set that to maximum, okay? And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Gamma, I left that alone, left it at standard. Um, bloom, all the other factors seem to work just fine, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back over We'll go ahead and uncheck this and accept the options. All right. And then now what we can do is we can uh, edit appearance. We can either edit the appearance of the entity of the model. Um, you should have already picked some materials for it already and work through that. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit scene. And I'll move this over here so you can see. Now, if you notice, there's several different backgrounds um, that you can use. You can use a, either <coughs> reflective floor and just by picking it tends to apply it but in case it doesn't uh, you can add scene to part there's factory floor also then what I tend to do tend to use for this uh, this tutorial was grill lighting if you can see it's back to what it was when we first started all right. Now we'll go back over to the command manager here.
And if you'll notice that we've already edited our uh, scene, we don't have a decal or any of those things. And you can see some of these options are grayed out. Now, what we'll go ahead and do is we can either do integrated preview. It kind of works fairly slow because it works at the, uh, I'll show you what it looks like, but it works within this window right here where the object is. So we'll select that. And I'll ask you, do you want to use perspective views and renderings? We'll go ahead and skip that. You can read that little message a little bit later and see if that applies to you. All right, and for this one, there's a, a SolidWorks logo. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that. You may or may not see that. If you are missing a logo, you might need to browse to it. In case your files were left over from a different semester, you may need to go back and find it. Um, and they'll give you the uh, path where to go find it. Now, if you can tell, this is fairly slow and it does some ray tracing rendering here. There it has a little bit more of a realistic uh, view. But this is the integrated preview and it runs fairly slow. So what we'll do is we'll unselect that. And then we're back to this to where maybe you can do some manipulation. Uh, maybe twist and turn the model around for a more dramatic view, perhaps. Um, but the preview window tends to be a little bit better. All right, and then there's these options that pop up. And if you'll notice that it'll render a little bit quicker in this preview window. And it works real time, so if you uh, rotate your model or whatnot, it'll it'll uh, re-ray re trace. Now, if you want to pause it, and you're going to move it around a lot and do some manipulation, hit this pause button right here. All right, and then whenever you're ready, you can just reset it, and it'll it'll re-render it in place. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pause it for the sake of this tutorial here. Minimize it. Now, if you'll notice, there's options here. We can go back into it, and when we're ready to do our final render, uh, then you can gain it up. Uh, what I mean by gaining it up is we can go up a resolution here, like 1920 by 1080. All right. And then we'll apply. And don't bother with Schedule Runner or Recall Last Render. That's if you want to get back your last render. If you moved it a certain way and you don't like it, you can go back. Uh, but I would suggest just repositioning the model. Now, whenever you're ready and you're ready for some output, you can click Final Render. And you don't see much going on right now. If you're on the single screen, um, you notice that I minimized it. but if you have dual screen, usually this is kicked off on a side screen there. Now you can see right now it's doing its rendering job right here. Um, down below, you'll notice that I have several different items right here. This is what your final output is, okay? And if you can see, it's got a little red button right here. It means that it's in process and working. Over here you can see some of the stats of it uh, rendering out. Now we're coming to the uh, final steps of the rendering process here. I went ahead and paused it because it took a little bit there. But if you can see it's kind of finalizing the render here. And that's what you see with these little blocks right here. Okay, now you can see that we have uh, finished the rendering process, and you can see the uh, finished product here. Looks pretty clean, everything looks pretty nice. Um, then what we'll do is, if you'll notice, there's a couple options here where we can load image, we can save image. We're going to go ahead and save this, and if you can see in my little project folder here, I've saved a couple here. So you can save it, name it what you'd like. I did a test render, uh, SolidWorks Large just as a kind of little name that it would designate what I know that to be.
Now, I'm not going to save it. I'm going to go ahead and actually back up here. If you notice, we're going to go and close down the final render uh, window here. And what we can do is we can go ahead and close the or minimize the. Uh, I'd suggest at this point that you go and close that render window. And the reason being is because we're going to go back into options. Now, this is going to take a while. Okay, once you've got your final product, you've got the perspective that you like that you want to render out for your print and what you want to put into your portfolio and you've done a couple test renders at a lower resolution, now we're going to want to get the highest output uh, that we can. Now, what I've read around is the best output for 11 by 17 is the resolution of 5100 by 3300. Okay, uh, you can choose to do so, but if you're finding 1920 by 1080 is giving you the best result for what you would like to do, that's completely fine. And actually, some of those renders look pretty good. I'll actually go to uh, show you what this one looks like. This was done at 1920 by 1080. And if you can notice, if I zoom in, yeah, you can start seeing the little edges. But for what you would use in your portfolio, if you're just going to do a small little square of this, that's going to be completely fine. But if you want a whole page of it, this is the big difference. If you'll notice, as we zoom in, you'll see a lot of the lines are very smooth. So if you wanted to do a large picture of this, say, in this orientation right here, you'll notice that it's a lot smoother. Uh, a lot of the lines are really crisp and clean. Okay. So as you notice, this is at 5100 by 3300, and this is what it looks like. So if you wanted to use those settings and you wanted to have the highest, highest quality, then this is where you would go in to do it. You would select custom 5100 for image width, and then 3300 for image height. All right, and then we would save it, okay? And then we would go back to final render. I wouldn't even suggest going to the preview window. If you've already got the perspective, like what I was saying, you've got everything finalized, and you're gonna go for that rend that final render, just jump to it. Don't even go to the preview window, because that preview window will slow this down. It will slow the whole process down. All right, and just to go over the settings again, you go into options and you would set your resolution there. Leave all of your other settings that I uh, went over just the same. All right. Now, once we're done with all that, you would want to save it like I was showing you earlier in the final render um, window and put it into your output. Now, what you can do is open up this JPEG in the Windows Photo Viewer and you can print directly from there. Now you can see the print quality that comes out on our printers um, and I would suggest printing to the 3209 printer since it's one of the fair, fairly new uh, printers that we have. We also have the plotter and come and talk to uh, tech support for permission to the plotters if you don't have it uh, so far. But if you select the 3209, go back and pick this, You'll see CAD print 3209, paper size, more, and you can see 11 by 17, and you can see quality 600 by 600 dots per inch. And it'll say unspecified. You can go ahead and hit unspecified or plain. That's completely fine. And then make sure fit to picture, picture to frame is selected. And then go ahead and print. And it'll come out with some decent quality. If you have any more questions on this tutorial, come and see Tech Support, and we'll be gladly to go over some settings or give you any kind of uh, input, and we'll gladly take some feedback from you as well. Thank you very much.